can we please start with this migrant blockade? I know a lot of people are are incensed about this today, and it yep. begs many questions. It begs why you know these people, these protesters. Yes, you have a right to protest, but if you're committing criminal damage and you're breaking the law, mm. why the hell didn't the police arrest them? Well, it, it begs the question as to who these protesters really are. So we talk about the whole university thing in the US and the yeah. protesters there, uh, and of course that's now uh, bleeding over into the UK in terms of mounting protests in mm. UK universities. I made that point, you, they're saying in Warwick and other places But you have to happening. ask the question, are these really legitimate protesters are, or are they organised anarchists? Because I believe that they're the latter. These are people that travel around trying to cause trouble it, this is a deeply political motivation. It's designed, you know, particularly today of all days, obviously local election day, it's designed really to have a pop at the Conservative government. Now, fair enough, you know, they've not exactly covered themselves in no, glory, have they, the Tory government, over the last year or so. Um, but I think this is less about protest and more about just causing trouble. The other problem, of course, is that these are also the same people that when you say to them and when they get vox popped on the street, well, OK, you, you want to see unlimited immigration to this country how many of these people do you have in your home how many yep. are living in your annex or your spare room or yep. on your couch or on your sofa and every single one of them to a man and a woman says ah i haven't got the room so the people who moan about not enough housing and wouldn't want a housing yeah, new house if, if built only. anywhere near there where they live and the other really serious point unfortunately is how many times have we read stories of people that have stopped let's say an asylum seeker being repatriated on a plane Weeks and months later, that asylum seeker, bearing in mind often we don't know who they are, has gone off and committed a crime. Crime as grave as rape. We have seen that time and time again. So I have to say, these so-called protesters, you probably, in terms of trying to interfere with the course of natural justice, trying to prevent these people from being here, trying to deter them from coming here, you will end up, I'm afraid, with blood on your hands. What about, the, what about the police, though? I mean, a lot of people quite rightly saying that they saw... I mean, yesterday, this migrant thing's not going away. 711 came to the United Kingdom. And I, I will say it, till I'm blue in the face or they drag me out of this studio, we have always, as a country, done the right thing for the right people. For the, we did it with Ukraine. But there, are, there, there seems to be a lack of acknowledgement from the bleeding hearts that many of these people are taking advantage of a country that doesn't seem to be able to give out the right image anymore. We're soft with a soft underbelly. I mean, we have the argument again and again, stay in France is not war-torn. You said something to me earlier when we were working on the show. You went, isn't it interesting? If you left a war-torn country, the first country you get to that's safe, why wouldn't you stay there? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm coming to the United Kingdom. Why? Because we give more. Now, I don't have a problem with that if you are escaping a war-torn country. What I have a problem with is this country taking people who disappear into our society, whether they commit crime or not, we don't know where they are, mm. but most of all why I have a problem with it is because the people of this country are going to speak very soon and they are going to say, whatever the callers today, they've all said the same thing. I've worked hard all my life, I've paid my taxes, I'm being treated like a second-class citizen. I can barely meet my needs of my family. I can't pay my bills. I can't get a new house. I can't see a doctor or a dentist. And I'm sorry if it sounds wrong they're saying to us here at Talk, but I feel like I'm the second-class citizen, and that's the issue. Well, look, we, we've always been a country that accommodates and welcomes immigration. Actually, as it goes, as world countries go in order, we are the sixth most accommodating country in the world for immigration. Um, the but their bleeding is, hearts tell but, me but, that we're a disgrace. We don't but, take but, enough. But it's a country built on immigration. I think that's a wonderful thing, personally. But the difference is, as a country, and look, we can kind of re-rehearse the whole Brexit thing into partly why 52% of voters voted Brexit. It's because we think as a sovereign nation actually we should decide who comes here based on skills and wealth and people that are going to contribute to society rather than it being an open door which believe me when it comes to Labour being in power in a few months time that's exactly what we go back to you think it's bad now you wait until Keir Starmer gets his hands on the keys to 10 Downing Street it's going to be anybody and everybody and the bleeding heart Liberals Jeremy need to understand that if this was legitimate so if the 50 or 60 thousand people coming over on small boats every year were legitimate why do they throw their IDs into the English Channel? Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? Uh, mate, the I reason is because they don't want us to know who they are, either because they come from countries that indeed aren't war-torn, so therefore they shouldn't uh, qualify for asylum, or because they themselves are criminals and are already in trouble, and they know that on that basis they shouldn't be granted asylum in Britain. Albeit, as we well know from acid attacks in the north of the country and so on uh, only a few weeks ago, 
our hapless border force, our hapless home secretary, uh, home uh, home uh, office, office in its offices, as yeah. as in the public sector element, um, they allow these people to have citizenship or certainly to have residency uh, if they don't lose them in the process. But this is my, this is my point that I've been trying to get hold of all afternoon. I I don't understand why, whether it's the police today with that migrant blockade, whether it's the border force officials, whatever it is, we seem to perpetrate this belief that we are a, an easy touch and I know that there will be people who are saying come on Jez this is this is really strong rhetoric what well, read the room let me let me read you some stuff out Jeremy can we please stop calling these student protesters kids they're not kids they're in their 20s they're stupid egocentric people they they hate Israel they don't care about Gazans they are pro-terror they are the minority and they, it is madness that's the story in America which is coming here it's all part of it apparently I don't know it, it strikes me that the bleeding hearts will always jump up and down. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is apparently they don't have any understanding of what's going on and everything that we believe in is nuts. Isn't this good evening, Jez? Of all the problems this country could easily be sold, if the talk presenters would agree to a pay cut, what? And accept the job as the cabinet. We could stop paying France and Africa and you can all divvy it up between you. Mike as PM... Benedict Spence is his cunning deputy, JHB is immigration and policing, and you and Ian as the world leads as smoozers, getting them to drunkenly sign on the dotted line. Alex to the home office, good cop, bad cop. Um, mayors, Kevin O'Sullivan can be the West Midland mayor. Salt it! Joking aside, it does sound like rather a dream team, Oh, my it? God. Uh, hello to uh, Joanna in Salisbury, Russ. Uh, listen, great show, JK. Suspend without pay groups at the time of the home office staff are not prepared to do what their country tells them to. Get in tents to be glad to earn that much money, which takes us to the next thing, which is the civil servants. I mean, this nearly sent me through the roof today, and I, and I will really calmly try and do this. Um... We, 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 we've got this home office and we pay these uh, civil servants with our taxes yep. and they are apparently so incensed by Rwanda that they're then using more of our money to take our democratically elected government to court. Now, Mike Graham made a really good point this morning on Morning Glory and he's back tomorrow at 6.30. He said he didn't remember them doing that when Tony Blair took us into an illegal war with Iraq in 1997. Yes. Well, the... So do we assume from that that every single civil servant, or a majority of them, are, are, are politically in one direction. We have to be careful because of the elections. That's what we're asking. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he made the point that if they've only done this to Conservative administrations, they've only ever done it twice in the civil service's history of 100 years, then you've only got to join the dots, Jeremy, haven't you? Um, the, the, the problem is, I mean, we have a civil service, like we have a metropolitan police service and an education system and an NHS and so on, that has basically been taken over by not just the left, but left wing people that think they can be activists whilst carrying out the job. The operative word within the, the, the phrase civil servants is servant. That is what they are supposed to be. They are civil servants to the political administration that has been elected by the people with a mandate. How dare they, how dare civil servants decide to second guess a decision that's been made by people that were put in place by an electorate? If you were running a company, as I said earlier, and you, you owned the company and that was your remit and you decided to go down a particular path, if you employed people who did the direct opposite to what you were telling them to do, You'd sack them, wouldn't you? Well, what, what I would do. But apparently their rights mean that we can't sack them, they can go against what's democratically elected and we have to pay for it. That's Ooh. why this country's on its back. Yeah, I, I think, look, someone needs to take a kind of metaphorical big stick to the civil service. I mean, yeah, the, the, it's more bloated now than it's ever been. 450,000 civil servants. 450,000. More civil servants than there's ever been in this country. And, and are they delivering, do we think, on behalf of the people of Britain, a better service? Can I, I just don't say I'd love so. very quickly, you lot, in the next 45 I mean, what do you make of the civil service? Do you believe that they are uh, value for money or are they becoming politically too powerful? 0344 499 1000. They have to be, I guess, held in part responsible for this entire immigration thing. And I'm not excusing They're our politicians. They're entirely responsible. But, but, border but, but, force. But, yeah, border force. I mean, we and have, the Home Office. We have the, you know, entirely responsible. We had Henry Bolton earlier and he just said to me, it's beyond comprehension to me. I don't understand why it's so difficult. Yeah. So if there, here's the thing. If there is a lack of will amongst the civil servants to implement what the government want... Yeah. Get rid of the civil service. So, so what do we think would have happened during the reign of the late, great Margaret Thatcher? Seriously. She just sacked them all. Yes, and, and that's exactly what I would do. I would walk into the Treasury as the new Home Secretary and say, 
I'm sacking 100,000 civil servants tomorrow. What's it going to cost? And they'd look at you with kind of disdain. You say, no, seriously, if they're all going to sue us and win, and the, the, the top award that can be given to them on the, on the basis of unfair dismissal, so-called, is 80 grand, what's that going to cost? If that's going to cost 8 billion quid, fine. We're now going to put that aside, and we're going to fire them, not just because they are meddlesome and they're not doing their job, but to send a message to the rest of the civil service, mm. your servants, you do as you're damn well told. And, End and, off. And what do you think, when, when you see that, when, when you see the way that that pans out, it just makes you wonder, the, the whole thing about, I'm, I'm actually genuinely all for protest. I think, I think free speech is absolutely essential and it's very important that we as a station, we can sit here and we can say, this is the home of common sense and free speech. I don't care if I would stand face to face with somebody whose every utterance I would spend a lifetime disagreeing with. What I will not accept is those people tell me that everything I believe in is misogynistic, sexist or racist and I should not only be cancelled, I should probably be imprisoned and I should never yeah. be allowed to speak again. A democracy surely means... Now, so, no, no, but so the, the bleeding hearts will say to me, but you're not considering this or you're not considering that. I always feel these people seem to take the opposite common sense view, the opposite view to common sense, just for the sake of it. And it goes back to that professional you know, sort of agitator, activist person that seems to be everywhere now. US universities, soon to be British universities. Just stop oil. Yeah. Well, the, 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 everywhere. The, the left and the left-wing media have done a very, very good job of calling anyone that's on the centre-right, so any what I would call traditional... Uh, original conservative, a member of the far right. They've done a really good job of putting that label basically onto anybody that believes in sovereignty, uh, your borders being protected, uh, being tough on crime, uh, being pro-business and wanting low tax, right? That is conservatism. It is, it's Thatcher, it's Cameron, uh, it's, it's basically every conservative prime minister that we've had probably in fairness before uh, Theresa May. Uh, and, and the fact that now they label us in this very convenient way as far right, it's designed to try to distract and to try to stop us on the right, the centre right, having the free speech to say, actually, we think this or we believe think that. Think it'll change? I, I think it will go full circle, ultimately, because I Not think... Not in our lifetime, I well, don't think. Well, I, I, I hope so, because I think even those on the left that are genuine, I don't mean the anarchists and the agitators, those that are on the left will understand that... You know, when it comes to identity politics, when it comes to you know men dressing up as women and being uh, in women's prisons, uh, when it becomes you know a, a question of the NHS deleting women from everything that they have wow. uh, as as a kind of as a narrative, yeah. even those sensible people, moderate lefties, are going to say, do you know what, enough's enough. So I think it will go full circle, um, but I'm not sure that will happen under Keir Starmer because I suspect. Well, if if he wins, we have to be careful.